Well, hello there, friends, and welcome back to another episode of the Midweek Refill. I am your host, Bishop A. Reginald Littman, Senior Pastor of the New Mountaintop Church, and I'm excited to share this teaching with you. Please go ahead and like, share, subscribe, hit the thumbs up. Make sure that if you're on YouTube that you do subscribe and hit that bell notification. Click all. That way you'll be notified every time new content is loaded. We've been in an exciting series entitled Trusting God with Your Entire Life. And the last few weeks, we've walked through some subjects that we've brought to life with scripture concerning areas in our life that we all need to trust God in. And I pray that you've been blessed by this particular teaching series. We also want to invite you to check the description box below for a link to free PDF handouts that accompany every single teaching. Here's why that's valuable. It's because not only does it cover the information that I'm sharing during this teaching time, but as well, I offer you personal discovery questions that help you take a deeper dive into the scriptures for your life. It helps you to apply God's word to your life. And it's an amazing teaching because as a tool, you're able to share it with others through communicating it by sharing it via email, jumping on a Zoom call, having a discussion about the topic, and being able to really dive a little bit deeper as you apply God's word to your life. So I definitely want you to access that in the description box below. Well, let's jump into this week's teaching. This week, we're going to be talking about trusting God with your fears. Trusting God with your fears. And here's what I'd like for you to do. Those of you that are watching right now, and those of you that are catching the replay, if you would go into the comments and list one area in your life that you experience fear. You may be experiencing some apprehension, some anxiety about your kids who are in school or grandkids who are in school, or maybe a health condition, a health condition or financial condition, or you may be worried about uh, something else, but just list a category. You don't have to be specific, but a category in your life where you may be experiencing a little bit of fear or anxiety right now. So listen, I want to tell you off the cuff that fearing is not a sin, but fearing can be unhelpful for our lives. So tonight I want to take some time and teach through a passage of scripture that is beloved to me that comes from Psalm 56, verse 3 and verse 4. And I'd like for you to get your Bible or your favorite app as we share the word of the Lord together and walk through this together. Again, that's Psalm 56, verse 3 and 4. So while you're getting your sword, your Bible, your app, maybe a notepad, or what have you, let me begin by telling you a little story. So in a quaint town named Aylesford, there was a rickety, raggedy old bridge that was known as Hesitance Cross. Hesitance Cross. And it got that name because every time people saw this old bridge, they would literally hesitate to go across it. So they called it Hesitance Cross. Well, many folks in town avoided this bridge due to the tales of its instability. I mean, you could sometimes see it shaking as people would cross over this bridge or cars or vehicles would cross over this bridge. But there was a man by the name of Jacob who, despite hearing those tales of its wobbliness, decided to cross it every single day. But every day that he walked across this old rickety bridge, he would be clutching his small Bible in his hand. And one day when he was asked, wasn't he afraid as far as crossing the bridge? Jacob simply replied, every time I fear, I remember the one who holds the bridge and me. 
you know, it's not about trusting the bridge, he said. It's about trusting the builder. And I just love that story because there are many, many bridges that you and I cross or sometimes we are faced with having to cross. And these bridges of life can be very frightening. You know, a diagnosis from the doctor can be very frightening and we can really fear crossing that bridge of life. When you finally, you know, get the kids out of the house, that can be very frightening as a bridge in life because it can look so unstable and so insecure that you can fear, will my kids be okay as I launch them out into this world? When you give your daughter away in marriage, that can be a bridge in life that can be extremely joyful one moment, but the next moment you find yourself again, full of fear, full of worry. So there's so many different bridges that we have to cross and have to face. And sometimes, yes, we experience fear as a result of it. But I want you to remember that story about Jacob. And I want you to remember what he said. He said, every time I fear, I remember the one who holds the bridge and me. It's not about trusting the bridge, but trusting the builder. And by the way, the builder of every bridge in your life that you will ever come across, that you will ever come upon, that you will ever come up to is God himself. Before you got there, God built the bridge. So let's look at what this powerful passage of passage of scripture says, Psalm 56, verse three and four, about how we can really trust in God when it comes to our fears. Psalm 56 verse three and four says, when I am afraid, I put my trust in you, in God, whose word I praise, in God I trust and I am not afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? Let's read it again. That's so powerful. In fact, I want to challenge you this week to actually memorize Psalm 56, verse 3 and verse number 4. Let's read it again. When I am afraid, I put my trust in you. In God, whose word I praise, in God I trust and am not afraid afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? And what a very, very powerful verse that is. In fact, I I only want to stay with these two verses tonight. We're not going to go to different places in the scripture. We're going to just pick apart Psalm 56, verse three and four. That's your memory verse for the week. And we're going to see several steps we can use in terms of trusting God with your fears. So I want to offer you several steps just based on the scripture, based on Psalm 56, verse three and verse four, that says, when I am afraid, I put my trust in you, in God, whose word I praise, in God, I trust, and I am not afraid What can mere mortals do to me? Psalm 56, verse three and four, our memory verse for the verses for the week. So let's look at it. Let's dive in to Psalm 56, verse three and verse four. So what we should understand, what we should understand is that the first principle that we learn in Psalm 56, verse three and four is to acknowledge your fear. Acknowledge your fear. That verse three opens up by saying, when I am afraid. Now that in and of itself is such a powerful phrase because there the psalmist was acknowledging the fact 
that yes, there are times that I am fearful when I am afraid. And we must learn to acknowledge our fears. Now, to acknowledge our fears simply means that we accept that it is okay to feel afraid for a moment. That in our humanity, it is okay to feel afraid for a moment. But notice now, we acknowledge our fear. We do not acquiesce to our fear. To acknowledge means I see it, I feel it, I am aware of its presence. But to acquiesce is to bow down to it. Look at the picture on the screen. It's to be hiding under tables and and you know trying to pretend like you don't see it, it doesn't see you and all of that. No, that's not acknowledging, that's acquiescing to fear, all right? So to acknowledge your fears means I accept the fact that in my humanity, it is okay to feel afraid for a moment. Now, we don't want to live there. Again, we don't want to live under the table. We want to live on top of the world and not allow the world to live on top of us. All right. So we acknowledge our fears and it means that we accept the fact that in our humanity, it is okay to feel afraid for a moment. So by acknowledging your fears, brothers and sisters, you give yourself the opportunity to actually confront them. That's why he says, when I am afraid. So I'm not trying to deny the fact that there are times that I am afraid. In fact, I'm facing those fears. I'm facing the challenge. I'm facing the realities of what a doctor visit may produce or what a court or a legal situation may produce. So we're aware that, yes, I have this, this debt that seems insurmountable. So that's acknowledging it, but yet it is not again bowing down to it or cowering down to it. So when we acknowledge our fears, we give ourselves an opportunity to actually face it and not pretend that it is not there because you can never defeat what you will not face right so that's important all right so number one he says when i am afraid right so that's we acknowledge our fears all right so somebody type that into the comments for us acknowledge your fears all right let's go to number two number two we must turn to god so when I'm afraid, where do I turn? Do I turn to the tarot cards? No. Do I turn to the fortune teller, to the crystal ball? No. There's only one option. I turn to God. So in times of fear, we have to consciously make an effort towards God and not away from God. A lot of people run from God when they're experiencing fear. In fact, they run into their fear and they embrace the fear almost as if to turn their back towards their faith in God. But no, the teaching is from this passage that we must actually turn to our God and away from our fears. And here's why. When we turn to God, when we're experiencing a fear, it is the first step to placing God first in terms of our trust. Displaying our trust in him is best seen by our turning to him. And that's why the psalmist goes on to say, when I'm afraid, that's the first phrase, notice the next phrase, I put my trust in you, all right? So when we turn to God, it simply means that we are literally putting our trust in him. So in times of fear, we have to make a conscious decision. That means it's intentional, it's deliberate. That God, I'm going to trust you, even though this is frightening, even though I'm uncertain, even though maybe you've received some news has knocked you off your feet. God, even in this, in my grief and my doubt and my worry and my frustration and my fear, I 
put my trust in you. And so turning to God is paramount in terms of really trusting God with your fears. So what does it mean to really turn to God? So that means, it means, it means prayer. It means devotion. It means time with God. It means even journaling. It means lifting your case, your cause, your concerns before the God who loves you and who wants to do great, mighty things in your life. So when you turn to him in your fears, you're putting your trust in him and you are placing your trust in him. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the very first step to demonstrating where your trust lies is who you turn to. So when things go down or go wrong or go south in your life, where do you turn? Because that is the greatest sign of where you trust is where you turn, right? All right. So somebody type that in comments for us. Come on, turn to God, turn to God. All right. Are you ready for number three? All right, let's go. Here's number three. And again, we're staying in the same passage of scripture. And here's the third principle we learn from Psalm 56, verse three and four. Immerse yourself in his word. That third phrase in Psalm 56, verse three and four, he says in God, I trust in God whose word I praise. You know, the promises of God and even the teachings of God are found in the scripture. There's so much hope in the scripture. And by reading and meditating and musing on the word of God, you actually reaffirm God's omnipresence and his omnipotence in your life. Every time you read scripture, you are reaffirming that you believe in the power of God and the presence of God that is at work in your personal everyday life. That's why you have to immerse yourself, submerge yourself, bury yourself, hide yourself in the words of the scripture so that as you take it in and take it in and take it in, when you are out in the world, the real everyday world of life, as we call it, whatever you have ingested, you will then deposit. Whatever you put in yourself in private will come out of you in public. So if you put in yourself word and truth and hope and faith in public scenarios, that's what's going to come out of you. That's why it's so important for you to be here at uh, this virtual Bible study. It's so important for you to read the word. That's why I go through all of the trouble. And trust me when I tell you, yes, it is. it can be cumbersome to put these together, these teachings together, and to put together the handout and to make sure it's there for you so that you can immerse yourself in the word. But it's worth it if one person will indeed eat the word of God and live it out and let the word of God transform you from the inside out. Because when you put the word of God inside of you, fear cannot stay where the word is because fear and faith cannot coexist at the same time. One of them has to exit. So the more faith you put in, the less fear you will put out. So it's a really powerful principle there. All right. So I want you to type that in the comments, immerse in his word. Notice his word now, not your own, not your words of doubt, not your words of self-criticism, self-sabotage, not the words of friends and family members, but the word of the living God as recorded in scriptures. All right, let's go to number four tonight. So number four is reinforce your trust. I love, love, love this principle. Reinforce your trust. Listen to what the psalmist says in Psalm 56, verse three and four. His next phrase is, in God I trust, am not afraid. In God I trust and I am not afraid. By the way, do you think by the third sentence in the scripture that his fear just went away? Maybe, maybe not. 
Is he lying? No. Is he speaking in faith? Yes. Sometimes you have to declare over your life the trust you have in God and then declare over your life that you're going to live in trust and not in terror. So when he says, hey, I am not afraid because I trust in him, I am not afraid. You ought to try that statement. You ought to try that phrase. I trust in him. I am not afraid. I trust in him. I am not afraid. It is a declaration that you make over your own life. Your own words can shape how you view God in faith. I trust in him. I am not afraid. And it gets into your spirit and then it becomes reality spoken out of faith, spoken out of declaration and determination. I trust in him. I am not afraid. You should try that. And it will change the trajectory of your faith. So the psalmist really is doing something I want to encourage you to do. And that's reminding himself of God's faithfulness in past situations. And the more you recall his interventions in the past, the more you will trust God in the future. The more your faith grows by the more you reflect on what God has done. And I trust God. I am not afraid. It's based on past experiences with God. What's God done for you in your past that you might need to recall right now to help you deal with some of the fear that you may be facing in your life. There's nothing more powerful than reflecting on the goodness of God, the deeds of God that he's already done in our lives to help us to push and power our way through where we are at this moment in our lives. All right. So put that in the comments, reinforce your trust, reinforce your trust. So when I speak words that are declarative statements, such as in God, I trust, and I am not afraid. I am reinforcing my trust with my words and it matches up in my spirit and it becomes my reality. All right. Reinforce your trust. Put that in the comments. Let's go to number five for the night. And when we look at this passage, the last phrase of Psalm 56, verse four, is what can mere mortals do to me? Don't you just love the spiritual attitude in that? (laughs) The spiritual fire, the flexing of the faith muscles. What can mere men do to me? So number five is you must understand your position. Understand your position position. Your position in God is secure. If you are in God's hands, no one can pluck you out. So you have to remember our time here on earth is temporary and mortal beings have limited power over your eternal soul. In fact, they have no power over your eternal soul. Therefore, you can walk around with your head up even when you're having some moments of fear and say, you know what? It's going to be all right. What can mere men do to me? I love it. You are in a position of victory. You're in a position of power. You're in a position of care that is unprecedented and second to none. Let's take a final look at our passage for this week. Remember, this is your homework, your memory verses for the week. Psalm 56, verse 3 and 4. Read it with me right now. Come on. When I am afraid, I put my trust in you, in God, whose word I praise, in God I trust, and I am not afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? Oh, y'all sound mighty good. I love it. This is your verses for the week. I want you to live this out. And if you find yourself in a place of fear, remember Psalm 56, 3 and 4, and trust God with your fear. (laughs) I really enjoyed teaching you this. I hope you enjoyed 
learning from it. Don't forget to check the description box below for the link that will lead you to the free PDF handout that has the study along with personal discovery questions for you to take a deep dive into the scriptures and apply them to your life. Thank you so much for viewing. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, thumbs up, and all that good stuff. We want to get to a thousand subscribers and your subscription, hitting that bell notification and setting it for all will help us to get there. And every time new content is loaded, you'll be the first one to know. Hey, this is Bishop Littman with New Mountain Top. I love you. And until next time, you go with God. Don't forget, get the PDF. See you next week.